Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to submit an AJAX form using jQuery and Flask. So jQuery will take care of the AJAX part and then Flask will actually uh, accept the AJAX requests and do a little bit of processing with the submitted form data. But before I get into that, I just wanna show you this. If you want this cheat sheet that I created, it's basically a bunch of common things that you would do in any Flask app. Uh, just go down to the link in the description below and then you can get this PDF that I created uh, with some Flask stuff in it that may be useful to you. So uh, before I get into actually showing you the code that needs to be written to submit these Ajax forms, first let me show you what I have set up. So I have this uh, bootstrap HTML file that has uh, two inputs, an email, and a name. And I have code here that I've already written because it will take forever to write all this HTML. So this is basically the uh, page you were just looking at. Uh, it has two inputs, it has a submit button, and it also has two alert boxes down here. If I remove uh, these styles, we'll see what they look like. So let me save that and refresh. Basically, I'm gonna use these two uh, alert boxes to indicate whether the request was successful or if it failed. So let me put those back to display none. I have a form.js file with nothing in it yet. And then I have a process.py that uh, just returns the form.html that I just showed you. And it doesn't do anything else at the moment. So, uh, let's get into actually writing the code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to handle the server side of it. So I'll start by writing the Flask code to actually process whatever data gets passed over. Uh, it's typically a uh, personal preference on which side you like to deal with first. Um, I like to do the back end stuff first, and then I'll write the front end code last, mostly because I like working on the back end more. So I'm going to write a route or add a route called process that will take the data that is passed in from the Ajax request and do something with it. So uh, as you saw, the two inputs on the form are just email and name. So those are the only two things I'll be getting from their request. So I'll name this route process and I'm only going to accept post requests. So let me set up for that. And then I'll call the function process. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is I need to actually get the the data that's passed over and they're going to be in the request object. Um, any Ajax call or typically an Ajax call is going to be in the form dictionary and the uh, request object. So I'll do email equals request dot form and then I'm looking for email which is the name of the input that I have in the HTML and likewise for the name. So name is request.form name. So just keep in mind, even though I'm not technically submitting the form, as you'll see in a few minutes, uh, it's still under the form data. So there are other types of data that can be passed um, to Flask, but in this particular case, it's going to be form data. And I already imported the request object uh, up here. So the way I'm going to process this data is basically I'm going to say, if both the name and the email are there, I'm going to do something with the data that's passed in. And if one of them is missing, then I'll just pass back adjacent objects saying that there's missing data. So it's nothing uh, really spectacular that I'm gonna do here. It's just for demonstration purposes. So now I'm just saying if both name and email exist, so if name and email, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new name based off the name that was passed in. So I'll call this new name. And all I'm gonna do is reverse the name that was passed in. So to reverse it, I just have to do colon, colon, negative one. And then I'm gonna return a JSON object. So just sonify, and I'll just return the name. So name and then new name. So it's not very interesting, but it is doing some type of processing. So if this if block doesn't get executed, then it's going to fall down to this next part that I'm going to write. I'm simply going to return a JSON object saying that there was an error, and I'm going to put what the error is. So I'll call the key error, and I'll say 
missing data. So that's it. So if both the name and the email are passed in, then it will take the name, reverse it, and pass it back in a JSON object. If one of the two are missing, then it's going to return an error saying missing data. So I'm going to handle both of these cases uh, in the jQuery code. So for name, I'm going to do something. I'm going to put it in the green alert box. And for error, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to put the message in the red alert box. So now uh, let me go to the jQuery code. So I have this form here. Um, so when this form gets submitted, so form dot or yeah, form on submit. And then I need the event for something. Can't find the right curly brackets. So when it gets submitted, I'm going to do something. And uh, after that, I'm going to prevent the default submit action to take place. So typically in HTML, if you have a form and you hit submit, it will try to post the data by itself. It's just built in HTML, that's how it works. You don't need any JavaScript to submit a form. But since I'm using jQuery, I'm going to prevent the form from doing what it typically does, and I'm gonna let jQuery actually submit the data. So I need to do event, which is the event that is uh, the parameter here in this anonymous function, and then prevent default. So that's gonna be last, just to prevent the form from submitting the data twice. And now what I need to do is I need to do an Ajax call. So dollar sign dot Ajax. And I will construct uh, the arguments. So the data is going to be two things, name and email. And I can't remember what the inputs are. So let's see. Um, right here, name input has the name value so I'll do name input dot val and then I'll do something similar for email dot val and let's see what the idea is email input okay so now I have the data then I want to specify the type of request it is it needs to be a post because in my flask code I'm only accepting post requests and then the URL is going to be the route that I created, which is process. So that's all I need for the actual um, Ajax part. And then I need to specify what happens after the Ajax call is complete. So I'll use the done function. So dot done. And since I'm passing back a JSON object, it's going to be passed to this function um, as the first parameter. So I can call this data. And inside of this done, what I want to do is I want to check and see if the error is there. So if I return an error here, I want to do one thing. And if this error is missing, that means it was successful. Then I want to return something else. So I'll do if data.error because the JSON object is going to be just the JSON object with one key of error. So if this key actually exists, then I want to do one thing. And if it doesn't exist, I'll do something else. So for the case that it does exist, the error is there. Uh, what I want to do is I want to show the error. So I'll get the ID in a second. Um, so this is going to be a selector for the alert for the uh, error message. The text inside of it's going to be the actual error. And I want to show it because it's hidden by default. So in the form down here for the error, I have the ID of error alert. So I'll just put that right here. And then I also want to hide the other one just in case the user submits more than one uh, request. Because since this is a single page application, I don't have to refresh the page. So um, every time I do something, I want to kind of reset the state so I don't see multiple um, alerts, even though they don't always apply. So let's see a success alert I just want to hide it if it's already showing I'll hide it if it's hidden then nothing happens so in the else block I'll do the exact opposite I'll populate the 
success alert with the text data.name, which is from this JSON object in the successful branch here. And then I'll show it. And then I want to hide the error alert. So that's it. That's all the code that I need to write to submit a form using Ajax and processing it in Flask. So let me run this and let's see how well it works. So I'll refresh. I'll provide an email. I'll say uh, john at prettyprintit.com, first name John. So I'll submit and I see it returns NHOJ, which is John backwards. Now, if I take away the email address and I hit submit again, I now see missing data because either the email is missing or the name is missing. Obviously in this case, the email is not there. If I take away the name, I get the same result. If I do something else, so if I say something like Anthony at Pretty Print It, I already have it there, then I see my name gets spelled backwards. And of course, if I take away the name and hit submit, then it says missing data again. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to get up and running. Um, and of course, you can scale with this to as much data as you want. Obviously, the more you have, the more organized you need to be about it. But this is just a simple example to show you how it will work. Um, ideally, in your process on the back end, you would have more validation. So you would make sure that the email that they send is an actual email. You wouldn't want them to send like a bunch of numbers over. Uh, you want the name to be stripped of all special characters because I guess your assumption would be that names only have certain characters. may not always be correct, but for most apps it is. Um, and of course, your processing in the successful case is going to be more complicated than just reversing a name. I don't think an app where you reverse someone's name would be very useful, but perhaps you would store something in a database or you'd run some calculation or something, something that's useful, not this. And of course, in the error case, you'd probably be more specific on what the error was and how the user could resolve that error. So uh, that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions about submitting Ajax forms with jQuery and processing the form data in Flask, just leave a comment down below. And by the way, I'll include this code on GitHub so you can just go to the description below and you can download the code from this video. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.